Gates Adams here on behalf of Apex Trader Funding, and I'm here today with Chris. Chris, how are you doing today? I'm doing real good. How are you, Gates? I'm wonderful. Thank you. Thanks for spending a little time with me today. Obviously, we have you here because you are yet another one of Apex Trader Funding's paid funded traders. So congratulations on that. Uh, Thank you. Is, you're, you're very welcome and well-deserved. Is this your first payout or have you been uh, have you had a few payouts so far? No, I've had a few payouts. This okay. is the first time I've had an interview with you, though. Excellent. Well, congratulations, not only on getting paid out, but obviously starting to show some consistency, uh, which is really where it's where 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 it's at. So um, as we kind of move into this, let's talk a little bit about how you got here, because I think a lot of people watching these videos, that's what they want to see is, is what, what did it right. take to get to where you are? So how long have you been trading? About three years now. Okay. So when you started, did you start with futures? Did you start with something else? Oh, the first thing I did was jump right in with stocks. So okay. I funded a like a Weeble account, get, get some money in there, did some kind of swing trading mm -hmm. setups where I didn't know what I was doing. So I'm like, oh, this looks good. Let me buy in here and then wait a few days till I'm right. And I made a couple bucks and I'm like, oh, cool. I'm a trader now. <laughs> Just stupid stuff like that. So I really started getting into stocks with swing trading. And when I realized how much money you needed to be like a full like PDT trader in the stock market. It didn't make a lot of sense and having to have a brokerage that was able to loan you short uh, for short trades and, and things like that. And um, Then I discovered futures and uh, it made a whole lot more sense to me to be able to get in there with just a small margin requirement. And uh, so I transitioned over to futures in December of 2020. Okay. So you started off self-funded? <clears throat> yes. And how long did you trade self-funded? <clears throat> uh, probably until last spring okay i started getting into the funded accounts i really didn't know anything about them um i didn't know anything about trading either i just kind of jumped in because mm -hmm. it looked cool i really hated the stock market i thought it was really stupid it was just some rigged game and it didn't make any sense to me and then i figured that uh maybe i'd get into it and figure out how to exploit it for some profits like uh, a lot of people did and uh I still hate it i think it's stupid but <laughs> i enjoy what i do <laughs> that makes a big difference yeah. So yeah. let's talk about when you discovered funded accounts and funded, com you know, funding companies and prop firms. What was your initial thought when I guess whatever that exposure was when someone said, well, you know, these guys can put up the money for you or an ad that said oh, we yeah. can put up the money for you. What, what was that initial thought? Uh, I, the first night I even heard about it, I couldn't even sleep. I was so excited. <laughs> I'm thinking this makes perfect sense to me. Um, to be to have to go out and put up like 25 grand for one contract trading on the NASDAQ on a e-mini was just, that wasn't a possibility. I was trading micros on uh, tasty works and I had enough for margin for that, but to be able to get access to all that capital, to be able to trade multiple contracts was just unheard of. So the trader funding, when I first heard about it and I didn't really understand it, when I first heard about it, I was just like, wow, this is a game changer. This was like life changing. And it really was. Uh, and it still so, is to me. It's it's great. Sleep. There's so, no other way I'd be able to do this without necessarily mentioning any 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 names. Did you work with any other funding companies prior to Apex? There's a couple that I tried, mm -hmm. and um, I ended up with Apex uh, based on one of your affiliates okay. that I watched on YouTube, mm -hmm. and uh, he he really seemed to like the company. And when I heard about how the process worked with Apex, basically. Uh, for, for funding accounts, there wasn't quite as many rules. Right. And that suited me a little bit better uh, for my style of trading. Mm -hmm. So I transitioned over to Apex last spring. And I'm okay. glad I did. And and for you, what what really, I mean, obviously the rules, but what, what's the biggest difference? I mean, is that really the biggest difference for you from the other companies or was were, were there other factors that really solidified that for you? Um, well, that, the probably the promotional offers that you run to, you can always... <laughs> find a discount right. you can get into it so much cheaper than everybody else and i said okay well that's like uh 80 off that sounds pretty good right. <laughs> um versus some of these other companies and then when i looked it's like okay i could have a couple really good days here and uh, finish one of these evaluations and get funded mm -hmm. uh, no problem where some of these other places you got to trade for so many days you got to have so much consistency yeah, 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 I'm not in. I'm not into all that. Some of my best days have been ones where I start like a thousand dollars down, 
Mm -hmm. knowing I'm right, knowing the market's about ready to take off my direction. And then boom, there you go. Next thing you know, you're up on the day. That's not possible with some of these other companies uh, with their, their drawdown, their daily drawdown, things like that. I, I'm not, I'm not about that. I want to trade like it's my money and I have an account built up and I don't have to worry about any of that noise because like, like I said, I, I'll take some risks and if I'm in drawdown and I know it's going my way, I'll suffer through it. That's well, fine. And, and clearly that's been working out. You're consistently getting payout by taking this not necessarily overt risk, but this calculated risk based on mm -hmm. your information, your, your, your skill level at this point. So. Yeah. The, the strength of my trading is knowing where the market wants to get to. I, I consider it like it's telling me a story and the story is it wants to get to this level. It wants to get to this level. It wants to break this double top, this double bottom. So if I get in with some not so good timing, which who has perfect timing on any trade, and, and I get into one of those areas where you can just tell, okay, it's building up and, and all of a sudden it's going to shoot out of there and you don't want to chase price. So you want to get in at a good price. And right. next thing you know, you're kind of leveraged up with four contracts and you're like, okay, well, this needs to go. <laughs> um now, it's not the best thing, but uh, with Apex, I'm able to get away with that. You mm -hmm. don't have a daily drawdown. That's mm -hmm. a big thing to me. I, I would not want to work with a company that has a, a daily drawdown, especially if you've already built your account up and you're right. not even close to to hitting your trailing drawdown. Right. Why would why would you want why would you want it any more like that? So I'm a big uh, proponent of using Apex, not just because of that, but that's one of the many reasons. And, right. and for me, that's what works the best. Awesome. So let's shift gears a little bit. Now your strategy, you talked a little bit about what you're, you know, what you're expecting and, and, and how did you develop your strategy and the ability to determine what you believe is the expected price level or, you know, how, how did you learn your strategy? I probably, I would say I learned it by staring at the charts for like a year straight, really understanding how the market moves. I think that's probably one of the most important things. Like I specifically trade NQ. Mm -hmm. I don't trade any other instrument. I don't trade stocks anymore. I just stare and look at NQ. And when you look at it over and over again, you see the same sort of things. Um, you see these consolidations, you see this double top, you see these breakouts that don't go anywhere. And you see like aggressive selling into an area and it holds a level. That's a good indication that it's going to try to move back up and try to break out of this, uh, this next level of resistance. Right. Uh, one of the little sayings I have is double tops and double bottoms are made to be broken. Right. Maybe there's no continuation with them, but if you get an area that's been tested several times and it's holding some support or it's holding resistance, you got to figure it's probably going to want to try to get back to that level. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things I use is a five range chart. And with the five range, you can kind of see the little uh, number of trades that come in, especially at key levels. Mm -hmm. And usually what I notice is if it gets above a level, say like a 50 level or a 40 level, whatever the level is, and you can see that there's some trades coming in. And it looks like it's trying to hold that. And then it kind of fails that breakout. To me, that's an indicator. It's going to want to try to get back up there. Mm -hmm. So having that, uh, knowing that, then we're just going to wait for some pullback, wait for a little bit of consolidation, wait for a support area to, or a resistance area to get formed. Mm -hmm. And then when it starts shooting down there with momentum, there you go. Awesome. <laughs> so... Uh, at this point, obviously you've, uh, you've developed some consistency. You've, uh, honed your skills. You obviously are confident in, in the moves that you're making and clearly they're paying off. Um, obviously this is not something that happens overnight. So no. if you're in an opportunity where you're talking to a new trader, they've, they've, they've maybe established their strategy. They've, uh, not necessarily perfected it, but become competent in SIM and they're moving into the space of, uh, you know, I want to be a funded trader. I want to move forward. Uh, let me talk to Apex Trader Funding and see what we can do. What's the biggest piece of advice you give somebody coming into the space? Yeah, that's all the keys right there. Being consistent, having a strategy and, and understanding it. I, I really feel like market structure is very important. Mm -hmm. I, I think uh, with futures, you need to look a couple days in, in advance. You need to work around economic releases that are coming up on the week, earnings reports, things like things that really drive the market. Mm -hmm. um, Jerome Powell, uh, Mr. Market Manipulator himself. Uh, that, that's the guy that moves the market. There's really nothing else. So uh, especially the last last year, everything's been inflation data, non-farm payroll, and when Jerome Powell opens his mouth. 
Um, so I, I try to formulate my weekly trades, like the ideas of, okay, there's a level that it hit. Now say we get a big run up on NFP and it, it goes to a level breaks out and it just kind of fails and works its way back down. But you see supports building up during the week and you get a big trending day that's starting to head up. You got to feel like that level is going to be key and it's going to want to get there. And you can kind of take advantage of those big days where you know it's going to move a couple hundred points. Uh, so I'd say market structure, understanding what the market is telling you. I'm sort of a support and resistance guy, uh, looking at the key levels and, and understanding what what's being told every, like I said earlier, it's a story. Mm -hmm. You got to learn how to read the story and understand what the story is telling you. Um, that's the important part. I, double tops, double bottoms areas that, that you see wick rejections, uh, scaling all the way down from a four hour to a one hour, five minute, one minute, looking at all the different charts and really trying to figure out where we're trying to get to, and then right. just reacting to what you see. So uh, market structure is key to me. Right. I don't really read the news anymore. I don't look at earnings, stuff like that. I want to know what is coming out. Uh, do we have 10 o'clock news? Do we have an 830 news release? What What's going on this week? I want to know all those things, and I try to plan everything around that. So it sounds like building an understanding of this market structure and what it means to you gives you that confidence to take those trades, whether that means not hesitating to get in, whether that means holding on even when you've had a bit of a challenge early in the trade and, and, and holding on through to that, to that profit level. Um, which absolutely, I think for, for any trader, regardless of what their strategy is, but that confidence and that lack of hesitation, uh, I think is a big factor in, in, in achieving that level of success, because we're talking about in some cases, split second decisions and knowing right. that you're moving into that space with that right mindset can really help keep you from second guessing, staying out, getting out early, et cetera, and so on. So awesome. Yeah, sure. You got you to gotta be able to pull the trigger when it's time to enter. It, right. you're, you're coming down to an area you have mapped out. You see it starting to develop support, starting to develop resistance. You got to go in. Otherwise, the next thing you know, you're going to be too late. Your stop's maybe a little bit too tight. You're going to get stopped out three or four times on the same trade. And here you weren't wrong at all, right. but uh, you got in too late and you don't want to chase after it. And give yourself the best opportunity to at least lock some profits and maybe go to a safer position with your stop loss, lock in a little bit, break even, something like that. Take the risk off the table. Right. Now, let me ask you, and I'm just going to take advantage of this opportunity because I think it flows nicely. Uh, operating as a funded trader versus trading your own funds, does that increase, does that, does that change the dynamic for you in terms of that confidence, in terms of that that movement? Yeah, absolutely. Um it makes the it changes the mindset a little bit because a lot of the risk is not on you at that point. Uh, what do, what do you got? You've got the price of an evaluation account, you've got the price of a funded account, and you're trading enough what to trade eight contracts, twelve contracts, whatever it is on a fifty k account. Um, you're not going to be able to do that with your own money. It, right. It's that's a lot. You need a lot for margin. So yeah, take some risks. Uh, everything's a risk. You hit you hit buy and. You hit sell. It's a risk every time. There's no guarantee of anything, but uh, you have to have that confidence. And I think as time goes by, you, a lot of those emotions go away, that stress goes away and you just, there it is. It's right in front of you. Take the trade, right? Win, lose. It doesn't matter. I, I don't care. I'll, I'll take three losses. If I know I'm right, at some point in time, I'm going to get it back. Exactly. And again, doesn't happen overnight. It happens over time with experience and practice. And it and, does. And you, yeah, you really have to get used to losing and you really sure. have to get out of that, that emotion. You don't let that stuff get in the way. It's, it's right. a business treat it like a business. Exactly. And I know for a lot of people that, uh, you know, they start off, they, they fund their first account and, uh, if they blow it, uh, they're never getting back in. So, so one thing that I've always seen as one of the big benefits of just funding in general is that time. Because if you lose a couple hundred bucks on an evaluation, a PA fee, or whatever the case may be, uh, I mean, that's not devastating. And that's an opportunity to re-enter the space and develop that experience and that practice and uh, start to handle some of those, I guess, emotional aspects of trading that we all know are there. So, Right. It's That's the hard part. It's hard to take the emotions out all the time. Right. And it only comes with time and experience. And in my opinion, it's never gone, but at least the effects of it can be diminished. So, yes. 
Well, Chris, this has been great, man. I appreciate this time. I think this has just been great, valuable information for any trader coming up. Uh, I hope you guys take what uh, what he said to heart and uh, move forward in a, in, in a way that puts you in the best position for success as well. Chris, keep doing what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, thanks, Gates. I really appreciate it. And Absolutely, man. And I would love to catch up in a few months, kind of catch up, see how everything's coming along. Does that sound, sound good? It sounds good. I'll catch you on one of the next ones. You got it. Thanks, Chris. We'll talk to you soon. All right.